Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you my marble powered computer. Now the reason I'm making this video is for you to understand that the computers that you use in your regular life aren't just black boxes. The processor that is the brains inside of there actually has very simple working parts. And those simple working parts work together very quickly to create what we know as modern computers. Now our computers that we use today use electricity, but you don't have to use electricity to make a computer. You can use something else, for example, marbles. So this is my clear slate board showing you how this works. All it has is two switches here. You can see that when this one moves, it triggers this switch up here. Same as on this side. And that just happens because these are connected in the back here. So nothing exciting or special here. Now the computer works by dropping marbles from the top here. Now without any logic on the board here, I can just put on these green little devices here. And what they do is just transfer the marble to the next level. So it starts here, it travels down, down, down to the bottom, and then it'll hit this switch and trigger the next one to go. So, so far this is very simple because I don't have any logic here. Now I can add something in here. Instead of these green devices here, I can add something that I'm gonna call a bit. Now the bit works like this. In this setup, when the bit is on, the marbles can continue flowing. But when the bit is off, they're going to stop. So I'll start it with it on, and then it'll turn off once it switches the bit. And off. So you can see that by adding switches in here that can be either on or off, then you can start to add some logic to this. Now when these bits are arranged in groups like this, it's called a register. And a register represents a number. Now let me show you how this can represent a number. Okay, so in order to understand this or even think this is cool, you have to first learn how to count in binary. So in our modern way of writing numbers, we use a base 10, meaning that we write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then if we wanna write 11, we basically write the number one, and then we start over at one again. So we keep a base 10. We know that this first number represents the number 10 and then we add one to that and that's 11. And then we can go up to 20 and then we write the number two there. We know that that represents two number 10s. But with binary, we don't go all the way up to 10. And the reason we don't do that is because we have to use bits and bits can only be on and off. So we only have the number two to work with. And so here's how you can use these bits to count in binary to represent a number. So when the bits are off, everything is at zero. But then when I turn this first row over to one, that's the number one. But you can see that I don't have any other choices with this top one, I can just go back to zero. So this can be zero or one. But what I can also do is go to this next level. So I say that when this next level is on, this bit represents two. And when this bit by itself is on, the number is four. When this bit by itself is on, the number is eight. And when this one is on, the number is 16. So to get the real number from this register, you just add the numbers for each right pointing bit. For example, this is five, because four and one make five. This is 16, because only this 16 one is on and everything else is zero. So you can see with the number of bits that I have here, I can represent any number from zero to 31. So the highest number would be when they're all on, and that's 31 because 16 plus eight plus four plus two plus one. Now once you learn how to count in binary, then you can use this computer to count the number of balls that you have up here. So let's see how many balls we have. So without even having watched this or even knowing how many balls were up here or down here, we can know the number of balls there were. You can see just from reading this, there were nine balls, eight plus one. And sure enough, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there's nine balls at the bottom. Now that we know we can count, we can actually do a little more complex things like add numbers together. So now I have two registers here and I'm gonna add this register to this one and I'm gonna put the output in this register. So let's just choose a number here. Let's turn this one to five and then let's turn this one to eight. So I'm going to add five plus eight and then I'm gonna put the output in this register. Let's start it.
Okay, let's check our result now in this register. We can see that the number is 13, eight, four, and one, 13. And that's correct, five plus eight is 13. So you can see that we can start to do simple math, which is marbles rolling down these switches here. Now we're gonna do eight minus five and store it in register B. So this is eight, this is five. Let's see what the result is. Okay, so we can see the final result in this register here is three. Eight minus five is three, that's correct. Now we can get even more complex and multiply numbers together. So to do multiplication, I need three registers. Register one, register two, and register three. In register one, I'm gonna be using my green parts here as bits, and so I have to switch direction. If I want it off, it looks like this. If I want it on, it looks like this. So they permanently point one direction. So let's start off by doing three. So this is three times two. And let's see what the result is. So at the end, you can see in register three here, the result is six. So three times two equals six, it's correct. Now we can also do other things like this, like divide numbers or compare two numbers together and see which one's greater or less. And because of this, that means that using this device here, we could actually do anything that a modern computer can do. Granted, we have enough parts and we make it big enough. But the problem with making a computer out of marbles like this is how long it takes to complete one cycle. You can see how long it took for one marble to fall from the top to the bottom. But computers can do this billions of times per second. That's the magic of a modern computer. A modern computer works the same way that this does, except instead of a bit that can turn off and on like this, it has transistors in it that can turn off and on, meaning let electricity flow or make it stop. But instead of 10 or 20 of these transistors, it has billions and billions of them. And it doesn't take a few seconds to complete a cycle, but it can do it billions of times per second. So the true magic of a computer is not that they're smart or can do complex things, but they can do a lot of simple things quickly. They can actually only even do one thing at a time, but they can do those things so many times per second that it's mind boggling. Now this type of device is called a Turing machine. The first Turing machine was invented in 1936 by Alan Turing and it was named after him. And since then, computers haven't really changed at all. They can do the same simple things, but the only thing that's changed is how fast they can do them. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it, hope you learned something. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video's out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.